A Berkeley professor says even his best students with 4.0 GPAs are not getting job offers. And before you go crying, then they shouldn't have gotten degrees in underwater basket weaving or whatever. We're talking about computer science students. In a LinkedIn post, Professor James O'Brien shared that tech degrees simply don't seem to be translating into jobs anymore. And whereas it used to be the case that high quality tech graduates would receive multiple offers before they even graduated, he now hears from students all the time who say they're just not getting anywhere. And unfortunately, what he's noticed is part of a wider trend. A Wall Street Journal found that tech job postings since 2020 are down 30%. And of course, layoffs in the tech industry have been yeah. everywhere for the past couple years. It's part of a wider trend in which college degrees, even the ones that used to be in high demand, just don't guarantee success anymore. A recent study found that a year after receiving their college diploma, 52% of graduates end up underemployed, often working in jobs that don't even require a degree. And after 10 years, this proportion drops to just 45%. Our high schools and colleges really need to be educating students about how the job market works now, preferably before they take out thousands of dollars in student loans. And we need to be educating them about alternatives to four-year degrees, like apprenticeships and trade schools that lead to very lucrative careers, many of which are suffering worker shortages. It might be time to refocus on helping young people make informed decisions when they start thinking about their future. And the main idea behind this is the fact that there's a lot of software engineers in the industry. That sector is completely saturated with software developers. Everyone wants to be a developer just because of the high pay it has, the benefits that come with it, the security that used to be there. And now when there's so many people in the market, what do you think is going to happen to the demand? Excessive supply, the demand doesn't reach there. And especially with the fact that these jobs are high paying jobs, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to hire just a few select people. I never thought this would happen. This chart shows the unemployment rates of 25 to 29 year olds with bachelor's degrees. Sadly, computer science is number one. People in tech are always roasting liberal arts and communications majors for not having jobs, but they're doing better than us, bro. This right here is what happens when you have years of social media influencers telling everyone to go into CS because you can make 100K plus no problem. And also the people who are in CS right now don't even know how to do it. They just know how to use ChatGPT. Let me know where your major stacks up. I made a video about a month ago that said, you know, the job market is crashing and why software jobs are disappearing fast. And I got so many people jumping on my back. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. All right. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Hating what I was saying, saying that there's no way you need engineers to make all of the softwares to be there. So obviously these jobs are always going to be needed. How I was hyping up AI to be the main replacement of all of their jobs, etc, etc. But then they didn't even know that they were actually working on a software that was going to make them redundant. <laughs> You serious? Y'all are barking up the wrong tree. I'm just letting you all see what's happening. It's gone so bad that people are now going back to school to go and study on something else to get qualifications on that because even like the requirements are starting to go higher. I don't know if I'm like shooting myself in the foot here because I have been interviewing for such great companies, but did anybody else get a degree in computer science and is going back to school to get like additional skills elsewhere because I just feel as if the expectations have gotten so ridiculous and every time I open up about it, I get told that I was a diversity hire that was first to get clipped. I get told that it's a skill issue, but mm. it has been like so competitive and doing six rounds of interviews just to get told, oh no, sorry, we don't have it in the budget right now to hire another dev. It has been getting, I don't just so disheartening and it's like i just like want a role where there's very clear expectations i'm so tired of like a 15 minute phone call and then like a leak code assessment and then a one-to-one -one, then a whiteboarding assessment like in person and then you meet with the team again just to get told no it's been kind of like it's been getting like a little miserable if i'm allowed to say that the requirements are not going to increase you need maybe 20 years of experience, being able to learn different types of coding languages in order to just probably get even to the final round. Right now with costs going so high, with recession being a major factor in this, a lot of these jobs need to be automated. Some organizations are looking to replace those jobs. All right, you guys, I've been talking about this for a while, but if you think the tech job market was recession proof, it's not. And there are some very hard truths that I, um, saw in this very interesting Business Insider article. Um, and I've talked about this uh, concept before that we are in a white collar recession and it's hitting tech harder than ever. And, you know, those engineers and programmers aren't immune to it. 
So the article goes on to say since 2018, hiring in IT has dropped by 27%. Engineering is down by 26% oh. and quality assurance a whopping 32%. Oh. So what's really going on? Why are these skilled professionals applying to hundreds of jobs and no offers in sight? So companies and industries that went on a hiring spree post pandemic, they're all cutting back, realizing that they overhired. And if you add AI tools like ChatGPT, boosting productivity, suddenly fewer humans are needed to get the job done. And it's brutal. Check out all of these industries. So quality assurance and human resources. I mean, someone even created a dashboard of their hiring or their um, applications just to see what was going on. So, Mario? you know, the amount of days that they were on the market, how many applications, how many rejections, how many interviews. It's just, you know, telling this data story um, to you all. And more importantly, job seekers are really feeling dehumanized mm. and like I said, that one candidate that applied to 135 jobs got ghosted 91 times and didn't land a single offer. And that's just not a bad streak. It's kind of the norm. Oof. So if you look at this graph, you know, back in 2019, the average job posting would receive around 100 applications. And now look at 2024. Oui. It's nearly, you know, doubled, if not over, over that Everyone amount. That and a lot screen. of it is due to all of these auto easy apply application mm. tools that you know just lets you kind of spray and pray but that's one aspect that we're seeing we'll go and look at another video of hers but before i do that let's look at some articles i pulled up here just so that at least we're also referencing the news this one was just done in november 2024 so not too long ago basically the highlight is that the tech layoff predictions for 2025 are more carts ahead. 150,000 tech jobs have disappeared from more than 500 companies in 2024. Think about how crazy that is. With companies such as Salesforce already announcing tech layoffs in 2025, the trend is set to continue with warning of recession could worsen things by creating an abrupt shift in AI adoption, followed by a jobless recovery. The theory is that when everything returns to normal, many current job roles will be automated and those roles will be retired forever. Let's keep reading in the article. Mozilla Foundation, 30% layoff of its staff. And look, more cuts happen. Visa, Dropbox, EV industry is not immune to layoffs either. The big tech uh, job cuts of 2024. In a summary of discontent, thousands of tech workers face further layoffs as companies continue trimming their workforce while heavily investing in AI. Cisco, Intel, this is what they said. We believe the trade-offs are worth it. The AI PC will grow from less than 10% of the market market today to over 50% in 2026. Look at this. IBM said it will look to replace 8,000 jobs with AI. Bro, they're not holding this back. My tools are getting more expensive, and I think this trend is going to continue. Last Friday, OpenAI announced a $200 per month plan. And today, Devin, an AI-powered junior developer, just announced a $500 per month plan. This is because of AI agents. AI agents are autonomous. They make decisions independently as they proceed to the next step. An example would be an AI-powered video editor agent that understands what video you're trying to make and makes every single change within Premiere Pro and edits your video. And so because multiple steps are involved in these processes, precision is crucial. A small error in one step could disrupt the entire workflow. And that's why people are willing to pay more. The risk of mistakes is just too high. You may think, well, OpenAI doesn't have agents. Well, OpenAI will be announcing AI agents within the next seven days. Mark my words. And this is also why people are willing to pay for Devin, the AI-powered junior programmer, which was just announced today. Mm. Mentally, companies are comparing Devin to the cost of employees rather than software or applications. It's fundamentally replacing labor, not just software, which explains the $500 per month price tag. And that breaks down to about $750 per hour if you look at their full pricing plan. Compared to a human employee, that is insanely cheap. What I think is going to happen is companies might have fewer developers, but they're going to provide their senior developers with access to multiple AI-powered junior developers, which will drastically reduce cost and increase speed. And those are only a few of the thousands of different types of agents that will be created. So imagine if they can do this with software developers, is the highest cost for a company when it comes to staff payment. Think about it. You won't have to worry about paying their benefits, their severance package, their healthcare. Literally all of that, you can only focus it on one person. 
Anyway, let's continue. All right, everybody, Ily Recruiter back. I just did a really big deep dive on a pretty long article that came out in the Wall Street Journal around tech jobs drying up and why they aren't coming back so soon. And there's a lot of really interesting data for you guys to consider um, if you happen to be in the tech industry overall and particularly around software engineering. So I hope this is helpful, but I'll give you the um, the the quick download of what I learned. So there have been serious shrinking job opportunities. As you all are aware, software development jobs have dropped by over 30% since February of 2020. Layoffs are continuing through 2024. I've been on this channel talking about that um, and bringing you that real-time information. So the market has really tightened for roles that were once in high demand and tech firms are cutting non-revenue generating projects and focusing on AI. I'm going to talk about this AI investment. I actually, you know, in my day job, um, having, you know, lunch with a lot of private equity investors and, and VC investors and others that are, you know, giving me their thoughts on why they're investing in AI, how much they're investing, why their attention is turned that way. So you can see that trickle down effect when attention is turned elsewhere, there are things that will be on the chopping block or that budget will be, you know, transferred to a different initiative. And this is the result of that, for, of that change. Um, so as I was saying, and, and what this article kind of focuses on is that AI investment boom. So companies are reallocating those resources towards AI and AI engineers are actually commanding salaries that are significantly higher oh. than regular engineers. And so this shift has made AI related jobs one of the few bright spots in the industry. So if you happen to be in that space, you are in great shape. But here's the reality of the situation. So we talked about that 30% number where, you know, there have been ghost jobs. Indeed has been, you know, um, having all of these unanswered jobs where, um, you know, they're posting for the sake of posting, but, you know, it's sort of dead end. Um, and so there's been a change in hiring practices. Companies are really scaling back on those entry level positions um, and internships. Even internships have dried up, sadly. Oh. Um, a um, lot of impact on non-technical roles. So let me give you some of that data. So here's a graph of um, the tracking of software engineering jobs, which started, you know, on the rise in 2018. I mean, they've always been in vogue in mm -hmm. tech, but in 2018, you really saw a bit of a spike in engineering, right? So there was like this hyper focus between 2018 all the way through My God. 2020 where it was really frenetic and then you see a, a, a drop off starting in 2021 all the way through 2024 oh, so you can see sort of that very stark downward slope on those software engineering jobs um, really kind of dissipating in the market or disappearing in the market. But let me talk about the non-technical roles. So non-technical workers like recruiters, like marketing professionals, have been laid off multiple times as well. And so tech firms that are relying on outsourcing and consultants rather than hiring full-time staff for these roles. So you're going to see a lot of that trickle-down effect as a result of, you know, not hiring engineering talent. It impacts a lot of other functions mm -hmm. uh, within the company as well. But net-net, you know, globalization and remote work. So you guys know I've been talking a lot about the rise of remote work during the pandemic and, and how that opened up tech jobs for global competition. And it really is contributing now for a tough U.S. market for tech workers because now that companies can see that they can hire tech workers overseas and see that same level of productivity um, with a lower cost uh, point, that's probably what they're going to to go for going forward. And I, I said this in the last video, outsourcing, cheap labor. You have so much competition. You have people from Asia who are super skilled with, with software engineering jobs, so likely to work for less than what you're making and they'll live a comfortable life out there. But here in the West, it's too expensive. Think about all the benefits, all the things that they have to pay you just so you can work here. Well, someone out there in India or in China is okay with making like what, 30K, far less than to pay someone $200,000. But now even some of these more advanced skilled engineering jobs are now being taken advantage of 
globally because of this remote work aspect. So for example, if people actually moved out of the US and they're, let's say they're living in Bali, oh. cost of living in Bali is quite lo quite a lot lower than what the cost of living is in San Francisco, for example. And so paying that person a lot lower wage or salary um, would make sense, right? So, and if you think about, you know, what they can do with advanced skill talent um, in those countries versus, um, you know, uh, U.S. tech workers, there's a stark difference. And, you know, companies are always looking for optimizing those costs in some way, shape or form. Now, think about it. You're just one in so many millions. It's not now that you're only competing with people in America or in North America and you're wondering, oh, that's my biggest competition. No, you're also dealing with people all around the world. And AI is also making it so much faster. AI's development is moving so fast. It's crazy that we're, we're seeing changes happening within even a couple of months. Look at this. We are so cooked. That's what the kids would say, right? Unless you are literally living under a rock, which I'm assuming you're not because you're watching this TikTok. What ChatGPT is, you know what it's capable of, you know how smart it is. ChatGPT that you know, my friends, is ChatGPT4, and this right here is ChatGPT5, which is done. It's finished, it's finalized, and it's ready to be released to the public. And it is so much smarter. Four is programmed with 75 billion GPUs, and five is programmed with 10 trillion. trillion. GPUs are the unit for graphic processing, which essentially is just the rendering of graphics and 3D images and videos. Meaning, you think AI is bad now? You just wait. I'd like to think that I'm a fairly intelligent individual. I'm no boomer. Usually I can call out any kind of AI when I see it. Dead internet theory, if you know, you know. This level of processing concerns me. I don't know, guys. I don't know what to say. We're in for a wild ride when this comes out. Let me know your thoughts. If AI is moving at this capacity, look, think about the capabilities of what it can do. It's well advertised to show that, well, it make a lot of the things that you want to do much more easier. Life will be so much better. But you have to think about it. Like, who's profiting on the other side? Who's roles is it replacing on the other side anyway that's my perspective let me know what you all think down below let's have a conversation about this let's see what your insights are but if you like the video make sure you like if you're a new subscriber make sure you subscribe because we talk about this all the time and i will see you guys in the next video peace